Good morning, Reverend Frieda. I wasn't expecting to see you here. What was that? I wasn't expecting to see you here, but I'm glad you are. Last Sunday is next week.
His mercy endures forever.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some priests. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. He answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Somehow 
They knew that he was a friend. And they said, we want to see Jesus. How is it that we identify or do we pay attention to people who might be curious about Jesus? And then, what do we do with that information? And why is it that Siri asks of a question? Um, in my experience, and uh, my experience is pretty limited because I'm within the church and have been inside the church for longer, basically, than I can remember, uh, there have not been a lot of people who ask me, how do I find Jesus? I don't know if that's your experience or not. And I think that if somebody had asked me that, I would have been a little bit at a loss initially of how to respond. How would you respond if somebody asked you, how do I see Jesus? How do I come in contact with him? And then what should I expect when I do? I think there are lots of ways in which we think about or people might hear about who Jesus is. Sometimes my impression anyway is that Jesus is somehow going to judge and that Jesus is going to be really angry or disappointed or at least maybe not so much Jesus, but God, who is Jesus, is going to be angry or disappointed at what I'm not. Um, or maybe get a sense that somehow Jesus is going to rescue us, pluck us out of a situation that we don't like to be in, that's uncomfortable, or painful, or scary. And so we think that Jesus is going to help us out of that situation. What is the Jesus? Who is the Jesus that you come to worship on Sunday morning? Why are you here? What Jesus are you here for? I hope that in part you're here for a Jesus that is an encourager, that wants you to become the best you can be, that acknowledges that you're not perfect, but doesn't blame you for that or punish you for that. That's a Jesus that to me is attractive. A Jesus that feeds us, that saves us not in the sense that all of our troubles are removed, but that we have companionship along the way. I was listening to a podcast yesterday on my way up to BWI to pick up my daughter and granddaughter. And one of the things that struck me about a relationship uh, podcast was the feeling alone is one of the worst feelings we have. A sense that somebody doesn't understand us or that we don't have um, anybody who will, that understands what we're going through, or that we're going through something all by ourselves. One of the worst parts of COVID, I think, which we're not completely over, but we're mostly beyond, is the sense of isolation. The sense that we were by ourselves in this pandemic. And those who live alone, who don't have anybody else in the household with them, had some of the consequences were severe because of the loneliness factor. People who were elderly had more likelihood of progressing dementia or failing other kinds of health because they were alone. So one of the things that 
we are not alone. A sense that we have a companion who is with us. That God is not against us, but for us. So in the Jeremiah lesson, we have God saying, I will put knowledge of who I am and what I expect in my people's hearts. The covenant that I have is, I am with them always. Do you remember the theory of that? Jesus says to his disciples, I will be with you always. Part of the reason we come, part of the reason we offer communion as often as we do is that in communion, we actually experience the presence of Jesus with us and in us. And can once again be reminded that we are not alone. Even if there are no other people around us, we are not alone. There are, there is someone with us. In the gospel lesson this morning, we've got sort of the bad news part of that, which is that Jesus acknowledges that sometimes we are not going to be removed from our difficult circumstances. It's not that Jesus saves us by plucking us out of a desperate situation, but is with us in that situation. God has not abandoned the people of Gaza, or of the Ukraine, or of the Sudan, or any place else where there is desperate situation. And there are many of those around the world. We tend, to, we tend to get one in our head and forget about the others, but there, there's, there are problems all over. People who are addicted in this country, people who live with domestic violence, live in circumstances where they may feel all alone and like nobody else cares. And what Jesus tells us again and again is we are not alone. We have a companion who will be with us, not necessarily to take us out of it, but to be with us in it so that in that companionship we may understand that there is life again or more life possible, or this too shall pass. It's one of those things that my mother remembers about her mother saying, which was, nothing lasts forever. And if you want the good times to last forever, nothing lasts forever sounds like bad news. But if you're in the middle of something that's not so pleasant, Nothing lasts forever, sounds like good news. And so here we are with the good news that what does last forever is God's presence among us, God's presence with us. And so when we want to introduce or show Jesus to other people, one of the things we can say is we've got Here's someone who will be with you always. Always, regardless of your circumstances. And not as someone who is looking over you to figure out what you've done wrong or what you failed to do right. Not there to judge and punish, to kind of go with what we have last week, doesn't come to condemn. Jesus isn't with us to condemn us. Jesus is with us to encourage us and to lift us up and to help us through whatever the circumstances we have. We can show Jesus to others when we know, believe, trust, and have experience 
Jesus with us. In good or bad. In thin times and thick times. And that's, for me, the good news that we have both in Lent and beyond. It's what we celebrate at Easter. It's also what we continue to celebrate throughout Lent. There is a reason people want to see Jesus. And we have a reason to show them and to tell them from our experience who Jesus is for us. Amen. And now let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. And one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the true and the God of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, be God from God made. Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, and from him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became the incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and consecrated, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he arose in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to him in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. And with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified, and is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge our baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead. We pray for the world to come. Amen.
and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray for those who are sick, especially those on our prayer list and all those whom we have in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in, in your eternal kingdom. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not left you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. We need to make your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you and forgive all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in our goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit to keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. This is one of my last opportunities to uh, to uh, uh, give to Bess, so here it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tom will be with us again uh, on Palm Sunday, and that will be his last day serving here at St. Mary's. He's going on to St. Peter's with Lynn, but um, he's been told he can come back here anytime, and whatever Sunday he shows up, he will be put to work.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet never did sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and our angels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is God, Christ, Christ is risen, Christ is God again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, and the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of you, and our living life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament, and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ is taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, we are to keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God. They can only remember that Christ died for you. Be not even your hearts by faith. For thanksgiving.
Thanks be to God. 